Epico, this is the latest product I've been developing for a while. Um, it's called the Tornado Freehand Metal Turning System. And it can be used to shape metal, um, do curves, hemispheres, balls, um, different sort of decorative work. Diff stuff that's difficult to do on a um, normal metal cutting lathe. Um, so you've got the, this is the work table. This basically replaces your uh, top slide, compound slide. Um, so you've got your, your top uh, plate there, it's supported on these five aluminium pillars. And they're machined down, so they're left over long. And you would machine these down on your own lathe to suit your tool height. So you need to end up with 32mm tool height. Um, so this is the bottom plate, this is your, what's called the adapter plate and you would modify this to suit your cross slide. So you would drill it or put in a spigot, or whatever you need to basically replicate your top slide. Um, the top plate has a series of 5mm um, holes in it and you use these, you can put a, a pin in there, pivot around the pin to do spheres and hemispheres um, or you can do concave cuts um, this is the tool post so it's made of um, SG cast iron so that it slides nice and easily on the table you can slide it wherever you want um, got a pair of threaded holes here and they're used to attach this is the uh, general purpose shoe so you would use this to do basic um, radius internal and external radio, radii so you just set that depending on where you set it will give you your radius from here to your tool bit so once again you just put a pin in and you can just pivot around that. You can move the table wherever you want underneath the work to whatever is most suitable. And this is the, the closed slot is for doing concave and the one at the front is for doing convex. The design of the tool post means that so long as you keep this tool bit edge within the area of the base doesn't matter how much pressure you put on that tool bit you can't tip it over so you're free to slide it around on the base wherever you like the um, tool bit is held horizontal and there's no rake angle on this it's just flat so it makes it easy to resharpen because you just turn the tool bit upside down and rub it back and forth on an oil stone or a diamond hone and it also um, stops it from digging in on things like brass and bronze. The front clearance angle is only about three degrees. This means that it restricts your cut because as you're pushing it in, if you push it too hard it's going to contact the work just below the cutting edge and it actually stops it from pushing, from taking too big a cut. Tool post incorporates a height adjustment feature that raises or lowers the tool bit about half a millimetre. So you can compensate for different tool bits and resharpening. As you wind this screw in the insert in or out, the tool bit height goes up or down. It works on the same principle as an adjustable parallel. As you move this forward, the tool height will go up. Once the tool height is set, you can move the tool bit to position and clamp it in place. To fit the tornado to your lathe, you've first got to remove the top slide. Um, yeah, this is a Myford Super 7, it's quite easy to do it on this. It's just two side screws that lock the whole top slide in place. Just undo those and the whole lot comes off. 
So this is Tornado table that I previously modified, the, the uh, adapter plate. So I've machined a boss which matches up with the original top slide. That locks into place and you tighten up the screws and your table's good to go. Um, you can also, with this type, you can turn the table around whichever is the most suitable position. I've designed the Tonado with, so that uh, a 3mm hex key will, un will adjust every part of it. So the different fasteners have been selected so that they all use a 3mm key. And the whole top of the table will come off just by undoing one screw. You can take that off and clean underneath or There's a couple of other attachments that can go with the Tornado, uh, one of which is the tracer arm. So if you're doing copy turning, you mount this pantograph arm on there, and then the tool post just clips onto that peg, just sits on top of it. So you don't have to screw it to the arm or anything, it just sits on top. Um, you can use this in a few ways. So you have a follower at the front, same shape as your tool bit. You could either mount um, a master pattern on the back, just off the holes, and just use that to follow. Or you can fit the fence and use a flat sheet metal um, pattern template. And that will just follow that. Um, you can also set this at an angle. So if different, um, give you a different effect, you can set that at an angle. And you could also use this for uh, turning tapers as well. Just set it on the fence and run it along there. This is the large radius shoe, used for doing large curves. So once again, the tool post sits on that peg. And lock it in, lock it at the radius you want, and it has a fine adjustment screw as well. And it will also flip around 180 degrees, so you can do concave cuts with it as well. Another feature of the large radius shoe is this adjustable pivot point. Now, normally, that pivot point would be in line with the tool bit. And that's all right for most work, unless you're doing a full sphere. That means that as you come around, your tool post actually contacts your chuck here and stops you from going any further. But if you can change that pivot point so it can swing either way, you bring it out to about here. So you're pivoting on this red dot now. You, re you come in with your tool. You can actually get all the way around and cut a, a full ball this way if you have the right tool. I found the best way to hold onto the workpiece is an ER32 collet chuck. It'll take up to a 20 millimeter shank. Um, and this is an extended length one, so it means that you can get right out over the table with your workpiece and get all around it. Um, with the R32 collet nut, you can, there's also enough room underneath there for the shoe to fit under, so you can put your pivot point right underneath if you need to. Um, what you don't really want to use is a three jaw chuck, because you have the, the jaws whizzing around, which are a catch point. It also, it's so big that it won't fit past the table, which means you have to make your workpiece extra long and have it sitting out here, which means it's going to chatter and wobble around a bit.